Thank you for joining us here at the South Seaville United Methodist Church. We have services here every Sunday at 8.30 and 10.30 in the morning. Uh, we invite you to come out and join us. We are physically distancing and we continue to wear masks during worship, uh, but we are here in the sanctuary every Sunday at 8.30 and 10.30 and we invite you to come out and join us. Uh, a couple of announcements I want to make today. One, uh, you'll see that I'm recording the message today at our child care center, The Learning Garden. Uh, it's a ministry uh, of our church to families in our community. Uh, we currently have over 50 children enrolled. Uh, we employ about 18 people. Um, and at the end of this, I'm actually going to walk around and you'll have a chance to see each one of our classrooms. Um, again, there's a lot to see here. And uh, again, if you have children that might minister, be ministered and benefit from this center, please contact uh, the Learning Garden. And we'd love to have your children as part of, of this ministry. Also, flowers, if you'd like to place flowers in the church sanctuary during uh, Easter, uh, on Easter in memory or honor of a loved one, uh, you can do that. They need to be in by March 15th. You can contact the office if you need more information uh, and they get a flyer on that. Today, we'll be looking at James chapter 5, verses 7 through 12. James talks about the importance of patience. So we go to prayer this morning. Uh, I do ask that we keep uh, the Sesame family, uh, Gene and others in prayer. Don uh, passed away this last week. Uh, when you're watching this, uh, we had his service uh, on Saturday here at the church. Uh, just a good man, a faithful servant of the Lord, and he'll be missed here uh, amongst this ministry. Would you bow with me in prayer? Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day and again the opportunity we have to, to watch and to listen and to learn. We're grateful, God, for this technology. We're grateful, God, that while we might not be able to be getting out like, like we want to and used to and will again one day, until that happens, God, we can watch in this way. We can continue to learn. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for your word, which can, can transcend time can transcend space. And Lord, whenever anybody's watching this, whether they're watching this uh, on, on the date, on, on March 7th, when this is uh, presented, God, or whether they're watching it at some other time, your word is the same yesterday, today, and forever. May your spirit minister to our hearts this day as we hear from you. May we hear what we need to hear. May we apply what we need to apply. May we take what we need to take, and may we give back God and serve how we need to serve and give. We pray, God, today for Don's family. We ask you to be with him, uh, with their family through this time, God, just a difficult time. We thank you for Don's faith. We thank you for his love. We thank you for your commitment to this ministry, God. Just continue to bless Gene, bless the family through these difficult days of adjustment. We're blessed, God, that you fill our lives with different people. And they may be there for a short time. They may be there for a long time. But God, we are better for it. We're better for knowing people like Don that have set an example, that have loved, that have welcomed, that have cared for others. We pray, Lord, for the ministries of this church. Thankful again for our thrift store, for its ministry and reaching the community. And we're thankful, God, for this child care center, for the Learning Garden. We're grateful, Lord, for the staff that we have, grateful, God, uh, for their leadership and for the, the ways in which they're teaching these young people. Be with the families that are represented here, God. Continue to be with them in these difficult days. And we thank you, God, again, that you give us wisdom and minds that we can use wisely the resources we have and that we're able to have this child care center open through this time. Lord God, continue to be with us we look in your word, continue to be with us, God, as we give unto you, Lord, in all the aspects of our lives. Unite us, God, as a family, a body of believers, connected with one another, as we pray together the prayer that you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen and amen. And now I'll take a moment and we'll walk around and see the Child Care Center here in South Seville, the Learning Garden. Friends, this is the Child Care Center, the Learning Garden, uh, at the South Seville United Methodist Church. Hope you enjoyed that little tour of our child care center, their learning garden. Good morning. Today's scripture comes from the book of James, chapter 5, verses 7 through 12. Patience and suffering. Dear brothers and sisters, you must be patient as you wait for the Lord's return. Consider the farmers who eagerly look for the rains in the fall and in the spring. They patiently wait for the precious harvest to ripen. You too must be patient and take courage for the coming of the Lord is near. Don't grumble about each other, my brothers and sisters, or God will judge you. For look, the great judge is coming. He is standing at the door. For examples of patience and suffering, dear brothers and sisters, look at the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. We give great honor to those who endure under suffering. Job is an example of a man who endured patiently. From his experience, we see how the Lord's plan finally ended in a good, for he is full of tenderness and mercy. But most of all, my brothers and sisters, never take an oath by heaven or earth or anything else, just simply a yes or a no, so that you will not sin and be condemned for it. A lot of our lives are spent waiting. Have you noticed how people seem to be more and more impatient in these days? I notice it often when we're driving. Uh, people ride up really close behind you. The other day I was on the parkway exit ramp and, and someone drove by me on the right. There are many things that test our patience. Driving and supermarket lines, doctor's offices, irritating people. We're all waiting for this pandemic to be over for, for a time when we don't have to wear masks, a time when we can sing in church again. We don't like to wait. Have you ever noticed that the more expensive the restaurant, the longer you wait? There are actually five waits when you go to a really, really nice restaurant. You have to wait to get a seat. You wait to get the menu. You wait to order. You wait to get your food. You wait to get the bill, and it's amazing that the person who is serving you is called the waiter. When we do all the waiting, 
Today we're continuing to look at James. He talks in these verses about being patient. You need patience in every area of your life. Now in this passage, he uses the word patience or perseverance six times. And he uses some different illustrations that we might learn when to be patient, why to be patient, and how to be patient. I invite you to bow with me in prayer. Lord God, teach us, mold us, shape us, help us today as we think about patience. Lord Jesus, speak for your servants are listening. Amen. Now, it's interesting. When should we be patient? I mean, I think James is saying we, we need to be patient all the time, but there are a few special times, special circumstances when you need to be patient. You need an extra dose of patience. The first one is this. We need patience when circumstances are uncontrollable. I hope you figured out that a lot of life is beyond our control. You know, you can't have your thumb on everything. And James uses as an example a farmer about circumstances that are uncontrollable. In verse 70 says this, Be patient then, brothers and sisters, until the Lord's coming. See how the farmer waits for the land to yield its valuable crop. Patiently waiting. Now you shouldn't go into farming unless you've got a lot of patience. Part of the job description of being a farmer is you're going to be doing a lot of waiting. You know, you wait to till the ground, you wait to plant, you wait to prune. A lot of factors of, of waiting if you're a farmer. You have more than the factors of waiting on things that you have to do. The farmer has to wait on things he doesn't have control of. The weather, whether it's raining or it's sunny, the economy, those working for you. If you have a lot of faith, you can be a farmer. But if you don't have a lot of faith, I wouldn't suggest being a farmer because it takes patience. You deal with a lot of uncontrollable factors, circumstances. Now, even in Palestine, where James is, is talking about, it wasn't the best farming land. So they needed extra patience. Have you noticed that when, even when we realize a situation is beyond our control, we, we still try to control it. And we do that by worrying. We think that worrying will control a situation. I heard someone say, to worry about something you can change is dumb. To worry about something you can't change is useless. Either way, you shouldn't worry. We need to have patience in uncontrollable situations. But where else do we need patience? Well, we need it when people are unchangeable. When people won't change, when they won't make a, a big difference. And he gives an example of the prophets, verse 10. Brothers and sisters, he says, as an example of patience in the face of suffering, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. Now, what was the responsibility? What was the job description of the prophets? It was to help people change, to bring them back to God, to, to be different in their behavior. Have you noticed how resistant, how resistant people are to change? When you make a tiny little suggestion, they resist you. I mean, do you have anybody in your life right now that refuses to change? You know how difficult it is to live with that kind of a person? We need patience with people. They, they, they are people who only see their own way, and they may never change. And we have to decide what we're going to do about that. James says, in those situations, have patience. Now, the word patience in the Greek is the word makrothumos. Macro meaning long and thumos meaning heat. Where we get the word thermometer. It literally means to take a long time to get hot. You have had a long fuse. You don't blow up. You don't get it overheated with people. If you're going to be a success with people, you have to learn patience. And if you're going to learn to be successful parents, you have to have a long fuse. You don't get overheated. James says you need to be patient when circumstances are uncontrollable and when people are unchangeable and won't cooperate with us. Third, he says we need to be patient when problems are unexplainable. The classic example he gives in is in verse 11. 
He says, you've heard of Job's perseverance. Job played in a Super Bowl of suffering. He, he won the championship. He was the wealthiest man that ever lived. He had everything going for him. And in a two-day period, everything fell apart. He went bankrupt. His children were murdered. He, he came down with an incurable, painful, deadly disease. We think sometimes we have problems. He had a rough day. He lost his family, his friends, his finances. He's, he's suffering materially and physically and socially in every kind of way. And his wife comes up to him one day and just says, why don't you just curse God and die? That was his support system. And the worst part of Job's suffering was that he had absolutely no idea why this was happening to him. For 37 chapters in the book of Job, God doesn't even tell him why it's all happening. There's no apparent reason for his misfortune. He was faithful to God, prayed for his family. The, the Bible says that he was blameless. He was an upright guy, fearing God, shunning evil. Of all the people, Job had the privilege to say, why is this happening to me? Life is not fair. That's so true. God never said life would be fair. A lot of things just do not make sense. Maybe we'll never understand on this side of heaven. Job didn't understand. And all those unexplained problems, Job maintained his faith. Sometimes we just can't figure out our problems. When circumstances are uncontrollable, when people are unchangeable, when our problems are unexplainable, we really need patience. And why? I think James helps us understand too why we should be patient. First, I think he says in verse 8, because God is in control. He says this, you too be patient and stand firm because the Lord's coming is near. Three times in this passage, James mentions the Lord's coming is near. Jesus is coming back. See, that's the ultimate proof that God is in control. Nothing can stop that. He, he's talking a lot about living with this heavenly perspective. You know, the Bible talks more about Jesus' second coming when he comes back to judge the world than it does about his first coming into the world. Now, there have been many people, I think, in every generation since Christ walked on planet Earth who have predicted when Jesus was going to come back. In fact, they predicted exactly when Jesus would return. These original people who heard these words of James thought Christ would return in their own lifetime. But not yet. I often have people ask me all these predictions of when Christ is coming back. The, they, people get the date, the time, and they, they say, you think that's when it's going to happen? What do you think? Three things I try to usually, I usually say to people. If Jesus comes then, I'm ready. Second, knowing that Jesus is returning doesn't make me live my life any differently because I'm doing right now what God has called me to do. And third, only thing I can say about Christ's coming is this. We're one day closer than we were yesterday. God is in control of history. It's his story. He's got it all planned out. Everything's on schedule. Nothing is late. Everything is moving to that climax of Christ's return. And then life, eternal life following. God is in control. Can you say amen wherever you are? Just say amen. God is in control. God's purpose for your life is greater than any problem you're facing right now. God is in control. Philip's translation says, resting your hearts on the ultimate certainty. Though a situation may be out of my control, no circumstance is out of God's control. Although I can't control everything that happens in my life, God can. So I trust God, knowing that God is in control and everything is going to work out. That's when I should be patient. Job persevered. God's timing is perfect. Some of you are experiencing a real delay right now. God's delays never thwart God's purpose. I'll say that again. Delays never thwart God's purpose. God is in control. Another reason why we need to be patient is that 
God rewards patience. James says in, in verse 11, as you know, we count as blessed those who persevered. Blessed. We're told about Job that the second half of his life was more blessed than the first. God doubled everything he had. That there's a benefit, a blessing that comes from being patient. All kinds of rewards. I mean, it grows your character. You know, you get along better with people. You're, you're a happier person. You, you reach your goals. There's a lot of benefits of being patient. patient. God rewards those things. You'll be honored. People will notice that you're a patient person. But, but not just do we get rewards on this side, but on the other side, we're told we're going to be rewarded. In Matthew 5, 11 and 12, Jesus said this, Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kind of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Friends, when people put you down, when they criticize you, be patient, because there's going to be a reward in heaven. Now, it's a natural tendency, one of our strongest desires in life, when you get hurt, you want to get back, you want to get even. You want to retaliate, you want to get revenge. You, you, you want to take these matters into your own hands. When you're criticized, you want to criticize back. If you get insulted, you want to insult back. But revenge and retaliation are the opposite of patience. So you and I need to be patient because God's in control. Because we're going to be rewarded for our patience. And third, because God is going to work things out. Often behind the things, scenes, things we don't even see, he's at work, working things out. Verse 11, he also says, you've heard of Job's perseverance and have seen what the Lord finally brought about. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. God was working all the time, all the time that Job was not knowing what was going on, what was happening. God was at work. A delay does not mean a denial. If you've been praying for an answer and you haven't gotten it, you think God doesn't want to give it to you, maybe it's just a delay. We have to learn that difference between no and not yet. There's a big difference. We want it and we want it now, but we need to be patient, knowing God's at work. Everything will work out just the way God wants. And again, James mentions this farmer. When the farmer plants a seed, he's waiting for that seed. And while he's waiting, God's working behind the scenes to cause the plant to sprout. He's creating the conditions so at the right time, in the right way, there will be a harvest. The farmer waits. God works. Philippians 2.13 says, God is at work within you. Maybe you can't see it, but God is. Romans 8, 28, we know that in all things, God works together for good for those who love him, who are called according to his purpose. We need to be patient. I don't know what kind of problems you're going through right now, but regardless of the problem, God is at work. Be patient and trust him. And what do we do? I think James also tells us what to do while we're waiting, we just sit back. We don't, don't do anything. No, there's something we have to do while we're waiting. And he gives again this, this, this illustration of the farmer, what you do. First, he says you wait with expectation. You wait expectantly. The farmer expected the harvest. He had to believe that it was inevitable. If he did the things he was supposed to do, God would do the things God was supposed to do. And at the right time, the harvest would come. So what does the farmer do while he's waiting? Just sit around and watch television all day? No, while he's waiting for the harvest, he's preparing for the harvest. He's expecting the harvest. He's getting everything ready, that time of preparation, when the harvest will occur. The psalmist said, I'm counting on the Lord. Yes, I'm counting on him. I put my hope in his word. What are you waiting on, waiting for from God? Maybe it's been a long-term illness or maybe it's something in, in a relationship. Maybe it's a financial struggle. Maybe it's something with your children or your grandchildren. Do you really expect him to do something? The Bible says, according to your faith, it will be done unto you. If you do expect God to do it, you need, need to prove it. And you prove it by expecting him. You expect him to do it. 
What are you doing to get ready? What are you doing preparing for that answer? I mean, if the answer came today, if you got a phone call and that answer, everything was resolved right now, are you prepared to even hear that, to receive that? So I think God's working on us, preparing us while we're waiting to receive that message. Maybe God wants us to mature, to grow up. Maybe there's something else he wants us to understand. He wants us to be ready and prepared. It's amazing to me that Jesus waited 30 years before he began his public ministry. 30 years of preparation. And then he accomplished in three years what would last in eternity. But 30 years, he grew, he matured. Isaiah 49, 23 says, Then you know that I am the Lord. Then you will know that I am the Lord. Those who hope in me will not be disappointed. So we wait expectantly. Second, we wait quietly. James points out the fact that we have this tendency to run our mouth and to get irritated, to get tense, and to, to, when we're under pressure, the things aren't going our way. We try to make our way happen. He warns us of two things to avoid. First, he says, while you're waiting, don't grumble against each other, brother and sister, or you'll be judged. Don't grumble. He says, in the middle of being patient, so oftentimes we can't be quiet. We don't want to be quiet. You're frustrated, but that's what you need to be, quiet. When you're aggravated, you want to grumble, you want to mumble, you want to moan, you want to complain, you want to have somebody hear you and hear what you're saying, what you're going through. James says, don't grumble. The New English Bible says, don't blame your troubles on one another. When you get up in the morning, do you rise and whine? And hit the ground griping, saying everything in the world is bad? He says, avoid grumbling. Second, he says that when you're waiting quietly, verse 12, above all, brothers and sisters, so is this compassion, brothers and sisters, do not swear. You ever swear when you're impatient about something? What happens when you get uptight, when you're frustrated, things aren't going your way, things are beyond your control? How do you typically respond? Do you typically take it out on those closest to you? Do you unload on your spouse, on your children, even though it's not their fault? But we're, we're frustrated and we're impatient. When, we, when that happens, we, we displace our anger and we focus it on those we love the most. James says, don't do that. Lamentations 3.26 says, says, it's good to wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. Habakkuk, 2.3 says, these things won't happen right away. Slowly, steadily, surely the time approaches when the vision will be fulfilled. If it seems slow, do not despair, for these things will surely come to pass. Just be patient. They will not be overdue a single day. Do you have a dream, a goal in your life, a vision that God's given you? God says it'll be right on target at just the right time. It's going to happen in just the right way. You need to wait expectantly. You need to wait quietly. And third, James says, you need to wait confidently. Job never lost his confidence in all that happened to him. The outlook seemed so bad. When it, when it looked so bad, he looked up. He sought God. Micah said, I will wait confidently for God. How do you wait confidently? I think you have hope. Hope. You got a problem that's unexplainable. You have a person that's unchangeable, a circumstance that's uncontrollable. You wait with confidence knowing that God is working. You sit still. You don't get nervous. You don't get anxious. You don't take matters into your own hands. Be still, the psalmist says, before the Lord and wait patiently for God to act. So where is it this morning? Where is it that you need patience? Do you have an uncontrollable circumstance in your life right now? Maybe in your job? Maybe your boss has asked you to do something that's beyond your control and you don't want to do it? Maybe you're in a, a financial situation that's beyond your control. Maybe you're dealing with a, someone with a long-term illness. What's your uncontrollable circumstance? Or, or maybe, it's, uh, maybe there's an unchangeable person in your life. 
Somebody is frustrating you and they just keep doing it over and over again. It's frustrating to try to make that relationship work when the other person won't seem to change. It's, it's frustrating when, when you try to deal with an, an aging parent and, and all the things that kind of come out as they're getting older and they become dependent upon you. It, it's frustrating that that cantankerous relative that every time you're around them, there seems to be problems. They're never going to change. You need patience with that unchangeable person. Maybe you need patience with that unexplainable problem. What do you do when you have these kinds of things? Remember what James says. God is in control. Maybe out of my control, but it's never out of God's control. Nothing is beyond God's power and his purpose for my life, for your life. His purpose for our lives is greater than any problem you're experiencing right now. Something good will come out of this situation. Something good will come out of this circumstance. God will, will reward your patience, if not in this life, in eternity. God is working behind the scenes, even though you may not see it. God is at work. Would you bow with me in prayer? And in your heart, would you just pray this prayer with me? Jesus, I need patience. Help me to wait expectantly, to prepare for the answer while I'm waiting, to get ready and act as if it's going to happen. Help me to wait quietly and not to grumble and complain. Help me not to take it out on those around me. Help me to wait with confidence, to be still in the trust that you're working, even though I may not see it. Help me not to get nervous and anxious and worried, but like a farmer, to plant those good seeds, to say things that are encouraging and helpful and uplifting and wait for a harvest. And help me, Lord, with that unchangeable person. Help me with that uncontrollable circumstance. Help me to be patient with that unexplainable problem. We ask all this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior, and all of God's people said, Amen and Amen. invite you now to go forth into your day, into these days, being quiet, waiting calmly, waiting confidently, living in God's patient grace. Go forth now in the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And all God's people said, 
Amen and amen.